Hi folks, I did this last week on Patreon and I'm going to do a version of it for you. I like painting English moors, I'm only really familiar with uh, Dartmoor, Exmoor and Bodmin, camped on Bodmin Moor on a camping site, Osmin to Mill, very nice. Uh, very bleak, it looks very inviting in the summer but the mist can come down and the temperature can change on a, on a sixpence as we used to say. And um, I, I, I can only paint from memory. I, I'm not working from photographs. I make it all up. But it would be of the essence, in principle, of um, having done it many times or done versions of it. I, I, I like this sort of landscape. I like, the, I like trees, simply stated trees and foliage. You can go into great detail with, with, with your fine brushes and all that. But uh, I prefer to try to get an impression. I do use a big as you know. Use them all, but um, whatever makes the mark. But um, on this particular painting, it's on it's on a rough Saunders rough paper, and you can get this lovely diffuse effect. And while the paper's wet, you can do sort of more or less anything with it. But as it starts to dry, it gets uh, yeah, quite critical, and you can get your cauliflowers and so on. I call them cauliflowers, oases. So I will be using the hairdryer during the various stages of this. Uh, anything else I can say? Yeah, I, I, I keep my palette very, very simple. Uh, I've used it, I just zoom out, or zoom in. Uh, very basic Ron Ransom palette. Ron Ransom, if you don't know, was a, a British painter. He was made redundant at the age of 50 from advertising, graphic design and so on. And he was fascinated by the work of, or the watercolours of Edward Seago, one of our great 20th century uh, figurative painters or representational painters, painted the, uh, where well, he was Norfolk born and uh, painted the, uh, the local terrain and abroad, worked in America. He was a war artist in the Second World War. He died, I think, in 1972 or 1968, I can't remember which. But a great inspiration to many people, and not least Ron Ranson, who developed his way of painting using a two inch wide, or just under two inch wide, hake. That's where it came, came from. First one to, I wouldn't say he was the first one to use it, but the first one to make it public that he used it. And I've been using it over 30 years since I saw a video demonstration that he did. That, that dates me, doesn't it? And. Um, and, and a book on big brush watercolour painting. It changed my life with watercolours. Totally revolutionised. It, it gave me a way of being able to express an impressionist picture with as little detail as possible, yet had a, had a sort of an atmospheric effect. And I've been using it on and off ever since. Well, I say on and off. On the off times, I've been painting oils. Spent years doing uh, Venice and sort of other paintings in oil than acrylic. I, I, I like acrylic for one reason only, it dries very quickly and is non or seems to be non-toxic and I've got breathing problems now. So uh, oil painting, I have to be very careful with what I clean or not breathing when I clean the brushes in white spirit and then go and clean them in, in a dishwasher liquid. Uh, but watercolour of course is really safe for everyone uh, and your children. So. Here's the palette, uh, cadmium yellow, raw sienna, alizarin crimson, light red, ultramarine, burnt amber, paints grey, burnt sienna. That's another cadmium yellow pile which I can't stand. Don't really like it. Not in this. Uh, the, these are Cotsman, Winsor Newton colours for student quality. They're good enough. Uh, but if you want the real intense colour, then you have to go for the more expensive artist quality. Not saying more expensive. Some of them can be very expensive. But this is basic inexpensive butcher's tray or food display tray probably 12 inches by 10 to 9 something like that uh, very cheap and uh, without more ado we'll, we'll get stuck into this I'm not going to copy it I'll do a version of it that's all I propose to do just to even things up with Patreon uh, right so I'm going to wet the paper all over and it takes a bit of wetting because of the porosity of it. Not a good word, isn't it? For a Friday morning. Every morning is a Friday morning to, for us retirees. 
doesn't mean to say we sit there and do nothing. Who watch Netflix in the afternoon, though? Or what we've recorded, which I don't pay for any television other than the TV licence, and we get that free. And my wife gets to 75 in October. There we are. Right, now it's the usual to, uh, to use a bit of raw sienna. Not thick or anything, but just, just to tint the paper with a warm background. Uh, make sure your colours are nicely mixed. I could use a bit of burnt, burnt, burnt umber in that foreground. Being right-handed, I sort of start from the right. The sweep over, that's why my skies are mostly clouds on the right. Okay, so a bit, of, so a bit of, I don't usually do this, but there's a little bit of, bit of yellow in there. Right, now we're going with the, uh, we could put a bit of blue in, a bit of ultra. But just, okay, just a little, just a little blush of, blush of blue. So a bit of, uh, bit of light red, load of ultramarine. It makes a bit of paint grey for that. There we now we're just... Get some more blue in there. And red. Because this dark darkens by about 50%. Right, so I'm going to put some cloud shadow in on the blue side. The papers, the board's about 25 to 30 degrees. Uh, a bit of red, a bit of red in there. So we've got a direction to the, uh, to the sky now, it's coming, sweeping that way. With the clouds just showing in between. Now I'm going to leave it alone now. We've got a couple of minutes to do that. Right, I'm going to uh, dry it now. So take your headphones off or mute your sound. I don't want any complaints that you burst your eardrums. I'll give you plenty of warning. Oh, I just re clip first. Let's take those off. So you don't need to pre-stretch your paper if you do it this way. You can do it as many times as you like, but it's lovely and flat now. Okay, right, mute. Oops, sorry. Mute, go. Oh, we haven't missed anything. Just a little waffle for me. Right, okay. Okay, there, now you can see how much lighter that's gone. It's still a little bit damp, but we want to put in the background now, using the sky colours, but very, very weak. And on the blue side, oh. not too much water. Oh well. Hills, not mountains. Okay, just drag that down a little bit, and we can overpaint that with our distant farmland. Okay, 
okay, that's just a little bit. Forgive my French, but Alan used to, Alan Owen calls those tip mountains. Uh, beware of those. They're easy to do, but you don't realise you've done them until it's too late. So, well, we can take a little bit of that out because we're against. Against that uh, light bit, so let's just, just remove some of that. Okay. I could have done that wet, but it would have sort of disappeared into nothingness. Okay, I'm going to give that a dry now. So, headphones again, you know the drill. Off we go. Now we'll, I'll put in some uh, some slightly warmer yellowy colour, but not too strong. So I'll just work work these these in. Then we're coming down to the foreground or middle distance now. And onto there I can I can put in some hedgerows. Let's get one a bit higher. Not under that one, I don't want to repeat myself, put it here. When I say repeat myself, make that look like that. All things you have to be aware of as painters, that composition. Although this is just a scene, there's, there, there's not, there won't be many focal points in this. Uh, right. Okay. Give that a dry. I'm trying it so that I can get on, so I can get on with the demonstration. Headphones off. Mutual sound. But fast forward. Details put in there. We've got these these um, peaks or high spots here, where we can put in the trees or the well, whatever we're going to put there. I'll probably use uh, Ron Manson medium hake as well. I love that brush. Oops, sorry. That's Oh, this is like the uh, transformer thing on the end of the battery here, yeah. end of the uh, webcam. Web. Uh, oh, technology. Wires, wires, wires everywhere. I probably kicks it. Okay. Right now, uh, we're going to put it, I want that slope coming down here. So, warmer colour, so we've got a bit burnt number. And a bit of, bit of yellow. Maybe a bit of paint grey. A bit lighter there. Just some yellow, some nice yellow. And also that one, a bit burnt sienna now. And a bit of yellow, just nice warm tones. 
just background washes. A bit of sparkle, but not a lot. Okay. So what have we got here? We've got the sky, we've got the distance, we've got less distance, and now we've got coming into the foreground, and we can put that detail in there and see what happens to it. Uh, right now, run around some hake, little small hake, bit of blue, bit of yellow, and we'll start just to put in a bit of bit of the heavy stuff up here. Just keep it on the blue side so that we've got a bit of aerial recession. Some you can thicken up a bit, make into sort of copses. Lovely brushes, but sometimes you don't know where, where the other corner is. But all very very faint. They did a bit of water. Because bit of rough paper. Just put some more trees on there. Keep that going. Till we've done it all, till we've done all that to line up here we can some we can leave out. Smaller at the back, small fields. And all right, that's okay. Now we'll have some fun. We're going to put in the I'm going to dry all of that now because I'm going to go going to go into that uh, foreground area coming from the middle distance forward. Ready, go. Put a bit of dry brush on, on here, just that burnt, burnt umber. Just to break up the ground a little bit, a bit of pains. And a bit of shadow in this area here. Because we're under that cloud. Okay, All right. Let's start on the, the, that side there. We'll start to texture. Now we want, we want greens now. So a bit of yellow, a bit of paints, a bit of burnt sienna, and maybe a bit of blue. Or 
panes. So then we're going to just start to texture this bit here. That's a little bit bluer on these. It's kind of the hill. Very light touch with these. Okay, and we'll just do this one on that top there. We're just going down into the hollow. Not a lot of trees on Dartmoor, but there are bits and pieces. But we're artists, so we can put in what we like, aren't we? Right. So it's just going down to nothingness there. And we've got this nice peak here. That's just fairly dry, isn't it? Uh, right. So warm up, so more or sienna, burnt sienna, shall I say. Makes a lovely, lovely, rich, muddy green. I've got pigeons on my roof, can you hear them? A bit of water, just to lubricate it. To go and scare them away. Okay, just try to get nice shapes on your trees. So we'll just come down here with a bit of a bit of a bush, a warm green, green, blue, sienna. Just a light touch, nothing more. Don't want anything too heavy. Well, we can do one of those fairly large. So they give a bit of perspective. I'll be looking in a minute. Right, that's a nice dark. Nice dark shadow in there. Very difficult to scrape out with the rougher papers. But it uh, doesn't really matter, so it's just a bit of. Okay, we've got to do something up here. I use a lot of blue and burnt sienna, but it's a good dark. Excuse me, oh, it's thrown off now. Cheek of it. Excuse me while I go and get rid of them. Oui. That's it. A couple of large wood pigeons. 
Well, he's still with me. Figures, but the figures don't always enhance. We're trying to get sort of a, a wild look about this. I think that's almost we're almost done now. We can put a bit of a boundary mark, I suppose, like. Uh, Just, just gives a little bit of detail in a barren area. Okay, that do. Well, I think we'll uh, put a bird in, a Dartmoor bird, uh, and a Dartmoor bird brush. Just a bit low, hovering, looking for rodents. I'll give it a signature and then we'll put it in a mount and have a have a look. Now it's it's quite a bit different from the other one, thank goodness. Uh, bit of tape. Just to hold that on. And I'll, I'll lift up this the camera quite away. And uh, oops, and we'll put it in, put on, uh, what's it? <coughs> there we go. Nice. English moor, English moorland. The, the sky is quite similar to the previous one, I won't show you that. But um, I've kept everything as simple as possible, just little washes using just two brushes, well plus the bird brush. So I hope you enjoyed that folks. Have a go, be inventive. Don't try to make do models of everything until perfection. Don't go for perfection. Go for an impression. And let the viewer decide what it is or what they like about it. I don't even want to put some black trees in there. I'm just going to leave it just as a, an impression, a demonstration. So thanks for watching, guys. See you soon. Bye-bye. Right, let's get that straight. There you go. Right. Bye-bye.